Welcome to Sunday School at First Baptist Church of Shawnee, Oklahoma for kids pre-K through sixth grade. We have been talking about Jesus's very, very special speech or sermon that he delivered on a big mountain, a side of a hill even, called the Sermon on the Mount. We learned in that sermon that God gives us gifts, things that we get when we follow him, when we are humble, when we are kind, when we forgive others, when we're peacemakers, God blesses us that way. Then last week we learned that God wants us to be like light and salt. Salt by telling people about him to make their lives better, enrich it, make it more wonderful and flavorful. And light because we want to reflect God to others in our lives. Today, we're going to move on through the Sermon on the Mount, and we're going to talk about what to do when we're angry. All right, I'm going to draw kind of an angry face, and then I'm going to show it to you. That's an angry face, as far as I can tell. But when we have God in our lives, Jesus told us in the Sermon on the Mount that God can help us feel calm so that we can obey him with our anger. God can calm us so that our anger does good things or goes away completely so that we don't hang on to our anger and be upset, but we let it go. Let's start out by thinking of some places where we feel really calm. What is calm? Well, calm is when you feel like you're not exactly excited, you're not upset, you're just peaceful. Things inside of you seem okay, happy, you're okay with what's going on around you. And the kind of calm that God can bring is called peace. And it is something that we can ask him for when we feel angry or upset. Where do you feel the most calm? For me, I'm always outside when I feel calm. Green grass, blue sky, maybe the sound of water. How about you? Pause the video and tell the people you're with where you feel calm. Where did you feel calm? Was it sitting on your bed at home? Was it in a special place that you like to go? Some place you feel quiet. Maybe that helps you feel calm. God can help us to feel peace and calm when we feel angry. And that's good because in the Sermon on the Mount, God tells us that if we are angry with someone, we shouldn't just let that last. We should try to figure out why that anger is happening. Try to make peace with those people. God helps us calm our anger. Let's learn more about that, but before we do, let's thank him ahead of time because we know he'll do what he says. Pray with me. God, thank you that you can calm our anger when we Give over our feelings and upsetness to you. Help us, Lord, as we learn about that, to be willing to let go of anger so you can help us have peace and calm. Amen. There are lots of times in our lives when we need to hold on tightly to something. Maybe if it's raining here in Oklahoma and there's wind, you have to hold on tightly to the umbrella so that it doesn't fly away from you. Maybe if you're going downstairs, you have to hold on to the handrail. I always feel like I'm going to fall. What are some times you need to hold on tightly? Could it be that you need to hold hands with a grown-up when you're crossing the street? Or maybe if you have a dog you're walking, you have to hold on tightly to the leash. Holding on tightly is important sometimes, but it's not good for being angry. If we're angry at someone and we hold on tightly to those mad feelings, they can really start to feel bad inside of us. One of the places that Jesus would have read in the Bible 
when he was thinking about the Sermon on the Mount was Psalms 37 and in Psalm, or Psalms 38, 7. And there it says, my back is filled with burning pain and my whole body is sick. All day long I go around sobbing. When we're angry and we hold it in, when we hold it very tightly like this, it can make us feel really upset even in our tummies and our hearts and our heads. We can start to feel really bad. Let's do something together to remind us of that. Do you have some blocks? I have some different kinds, small ones and big ones. Let's see if we can actually build something with the blocks while our hands are super tight. So make fists with your hands and then see if you can move things around and build what you want to build. The big blocks aren't so bad, but when I start trying to build with small blocks and I want to try to put them a certain way, or maybe I want to try to, like with the Legos, if I want to try to make them stick together, having my hands clenched up and tight isn't good for getting things done. Well, what about a snack? Maybe we could just stay all clenched up while we have a snack. It's going to be very difficult for me to open this snack until I let go of that clenched up tight feeling. At that point, I should be able to open up my snack and eat it. You know, there's a lot more we can get done when we're willing to unclench. What things could you do if you weren't angry? What good things could you do? Helpful things, fun things. Think of something that makes you angry. Now this week, I want you to try to think about every time you feel that anger, letting go of it and looking around to see what else you might be able to do or enjoy with your friends and family. God helps us calm our anger. Thank you, God, that you care about how we feel and what's best for us. When our anger is calmed, one of the good things is we can notice God even more. We already talked about when we're angry, we kind of tighten up. What do you do with your face when you're angry? Can you make an angry face right now? What about what you do with your body in a big way? Do you sometimes punch the air? Do you sometimes kick somebody? Do you make big gestures with your hands when you're talking when you're angry? When we're angry, it might be that we feel like exploding, but it really doesn't feel that good, and anger can hurt us and others. That's why God helps us calm our anger. God tells us that big anger like that can be unhelpful sometimes. God wants us to know what to do when we feel angry. Let's listen as Mr. Phil tells us the Bible story about what anger is like and what God wants us to do. Hey guys, welcome back to Sunday School and we're still looking at the Sermon on the Mount. This week, we're going to look at some verses further on in the chapter 5 in Matthew that talks about how God helps us calm our anger. You ever get mad? I think we all get mad. Getting mad isn't necessarily a problem. It's what we do with it. And here, when Jesus is giving his examples to the people at this part of this speech we call the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is talking about how to deal with being angry. Jesus, God helps us calm our anger. So we're looking again at Matthew chapter 5. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, first four books of the New Testament. 
the Gospels, the good news about Jesus, Matthew 5, and we're going to read from verses 21 to 26 today, okay, about how God helps us calm our anger. Chapter 5, verse 21 says, You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. Well, you guys know where that's talking about, right? Of old, right, in the Old Testament, in both Exodus and Deuteronomy. It's the Ten Commandments, right? The law that God gave to Moses on the mountain. One of the laws says, thou shalt not kill. You know, you do not kill. You must not murder. And if you murder, something bad will happen to you. And Jesus says, okay, you remember how in the old times, in the Old Testament, God said, you should not murder? Well, verse 22 Jesus explains what God's thinking was behind that rule. He says, I say to you that everyone who's angry with his brother will be judged, will be in trouble. Whoever insults his brother, and the original term for insult is empty head, whoever says to his brother, hey, you empty head, will be liable to being judged by the council. And whoever calls his brother a fool, will be liable to the hell of fire or hell fire. When we talk about hell fire, that's the judgment after death where you get separated from God forever. You don't get to be anywhere near God forever after you die. This is pretty hardcore. Jesus is saying here, you're not supposed to be angry. In some texts, the translation is angry without a good reason or angry without cause. If you're angry with your brother, you will be judged, you'll be punished. If you insult your brother, say empty head or call him dummy, call him stupid kind of thing, you will be judged. And if you call your brother a fool, you're in danger of going to a place where you're going to be separated from God. You know why? Because God made your brother too. When you insult your brother, you're insulting God. What a concept! In verse 23, Jesus goes on to explain what this means in everyday life. He says, so if you're offering your gift at the altar, like you come to worship on Sunday, you come and you bring an offering and you bring something and you remember that your brother has something against you, right? Your brother's mad at you for something or you cheated your brother or you did something to your brother. Leave your gift before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. This is really important. This is one of the passages that we talk about peacemaking, biblical peacemaking, the idea that if Jesus is the Prince of Peace, and if we're going to follow Jesus, then we're going to be peacemakers too. And here Jesus is saying, when you're mad at your brother, and your brother's mad at me, you shouldn't come to worship. You shouldn't come and bring an offering in church until you fix it with your brother. Because until you fix it with your brother, you're not being my follower. Because I died for your brother, I love for your brother. It's different parts of the New Testament where Paul even says, Why do you hold your brother for being worthless? Because God died, Jesus died for your brother too. So the Lord says here, this is so serious. Anger and holding grudges and things is so serious that you shouldn't even come to worship until you get things right with your brother, until you be reconciled. And that's a commandment. First, right? Get it right with your brother first, be reconciled, and then come offer your gift. In verse 25, Jesus talks about how this extends into our general life in public. He says, come to terms quickly with your accuser while you're going with him to court. Before he hands you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you get put in prison. This is a concept that we call mediation. Sometimes in legal terms, it's a pretrial diversion. What Jesus was saying to people here is saying, look, you got beef with somebody. You got a problem with somebody. You got an argument with somebody. You better work it out fast. And before you get involved in court or some official getting involved, maybe the principal at the school or somebody in your parents or somebody at church before somebody else gets involved because they might decide that it's your fault and they'll make you pay for it. And that's what Jesus says finally in verse 26. He says, I'll tell you truly, 
You'll be thrown in prison and you won't get out until you've paid the last penny, right? If you don't work things out with somebody, you might go to court and you might lose. And you might go to jail or have to pay a fine. And you won't be out. You won't be okay until you've paid the last penny. These are some really important passages about Jesus explaining what the rules in the Old Testament actually meant and how God wants us to be peacemakers. He wants his followers to live in peace, to not be angry. And when something comes up that causes anger, to work it out. Work it out fast. Work it out before you come back to church. Work it out before you bring an offering to God. Work it out before you get stuck in court. Work it out before you get thrown in jail. Because when these things escalate, and you've seen this in your life, you've seen it at your school, People get in an argument, and then they get mad, and then they get madder the second day, and they get madder the third day, and then it gets out of control. These are some really great examples about how God helps us calm our anger. Jesus wants us to be peacemakers, and God will help us control and calm our anger. When someone makes us angry, there are some things we can do to help us stop being angry and turn to God to help calm us. One of those things is to take a few deep breaths like this. Another thing you can do is just walk away. Walking away from the thing that makes you feel angry shows that you're in charge of what you do and that you don't have to stay in that place that makes you angry. Another thing you can do is to stop and pray. God is always there listening to you. So, let's practice that. What if someone were to say something mean to you? Right then and there, we can pray. We can ask God to help those people. We can ask God to help heal our hearts from those mean things that they said. What's about if somebody were to take something away from you? Just take it away. Before you do anything, take a few deep breaths. Now you can make a clear-headed decision about what to do. Would you like them to keep it? Would you like to ask for help from a grown-up? To get that thing back? Would you like to simply say to them, may I have my thing back? What if somebody were to um, want to play with something that you want to play with and they don't take it but they say they want it and it makes you feel angry? Well, Maybe you could walk away for a few minutes and think about what you want to do and then come back and you can say, okay, why don't you play with it for five minutes and then I'll play with it for five minutes and we can take turns. Sometimes walking away is the best choice so that you can make a clear decision. Anytime we get angry with something or someone, we can pray and ask God to help us. We can pray right now thinking ahead about a time that you might get angry. Let's pray together. God, we know that when we think about being angry, we can imagine the things that make us angry. In those moments, Lord, help us remember this prayer, this prayer to you asking for help. Give us the ability to remember to breathe deeply walk away for a moment if we need to, take all the time we need and turn to you and ask for help calming our anger. In your name we pray, amen. I had a really interesting video for you. It's called Calm Down, Carl. In this video, things happen to a guy named Carl things that happen to all of us, but they seem to happen to Carl all at once, and he's getting really frustrated. Let's watch the video and see how Carl handles, handles it when one thing after another goes wrong. I'm gonna be late.
late for the bus! Ah! Oh, I better at least brush my teeth. I still have morning cheesy poop breath. <laughs> Hmm. Ah, who used all my toothpaste? What could I use to brush my teeth? Oh yeah, my dad uses this when he goes on dates with my mom. Perfect. Oh, okay, breakfast. Um, I don't have time for a bowl of cheesy poofs, so I'm just gonna drink some orange juice, yeah. <laughs> Ah! What kind of animal just puts back an empty orange juice container? I don't have time for this. Oh, oh, where's my backpack and homework? Oh. Oh, no. My homework's not done. Oh, what did I do last night? At least I did my half of the science project I'm doing with Violet. I'd better call Violet to make sure she's done with her half of the project. I cannot fail this project. Hey Carl, what's going on? Violet, please tell me you're done with your half of the science project. The what? What do you mean the what? The science project! The one that's due today! Remember? The one I've been training my hamster for? Oh, yeah. That. Nope, I haven't even started. I was gonna do that over our lunch break. Lunch break? Carl, calm down. Everything's gonna be fine. Hey, shouldn't you be at school already? Ah! I am calm! And yes, I should be at school today. I'll explain later. I gotta go! Oh, oh this day just went from bad to worst. What's that sound? Ah! The bus! Oh! Ah! Ah! Wait for me! Stop! Stop! My test! Stop! I'm gonna miss school and fail my math quiz and my spelling test. <sighs> this is the worst day ever. What am I gonna do? All right, which things happened to Carl that would make you the angriest? After everything that happened, what do you think Carl is going to do next? What would have been a healthy way for Carl to handle his anger? What are some things Carl could have done ahead of time so that he wouldn't be so frustrated and angry? Could he have gotten his homework done ahead of time? Could he have not left messes? Could he have checked ahead of time to see if he had everything he needed to have a good morning? How did Carl's story show how anger can build up if we don't ask God to step in and help us to calm down? Everything happened to Carl in this video. At any point, Carl could have stopped and prayed that God would help him. But he just let things keep upsetting him and keep upsetting him and keep upsetting him. It was stuff he couldn't control, but the one thing he could control is what he chose to do. He could choose to calm down. He could choose to ask God to help him calm down, to breathe, to walk away, to pray and ask God for help. God can help calm our anger too when we feel like we're going to explode. One thing that you might try is to sing a song and I have got the perfect song for us to sing. So listen and join in once you learn the words to help you remember that no matter how you feel, God is with you.
Well, today we learned that God helps us calm our anger. You learned one great song about that. Let's learn another one. Something that you can hum to yourself really quietly when you're trying to remember about what you need to do to calm your anger. We talked about taking a breath, walking away, and saying a prayer. Let's sing this song. When I'm angry, take a breath, take a breath, take a breath. When I'm angry, take a breath, God will calm my anger. Now let's sing together, walk away. When I'm angry, walk away, walk away, walk away. When I'm angry, walk away, God can calm my anger. How about say a prayer? Sing with me. When I'm angry, say a prayer, say a prayer, say a prayer. When I'm angry, say a prayer, God can calm my anger. Well, let's practice the last one. Pray with me. Thank you, God, that you are so strong that you can calm our anger. Thank you that you want to help us. Help us, Lord, to be humble and go to you and say, I need help. Please help me calm my anger. Amen. I'm so glad you joined me for Sunday School today. I hope you'll come to this week's pool party at Jesse and Susan Fields' house Wednesday at 6 p.m. We'll have a great time together. See you there, and see you next week for Sunday School.